Welcome back to Pineapple Express MX. Uh, sadly, nothing to do with dirt biking today. Um, I have COVID, so I'm confined and locked down to my bedroom. Figured I'd occupy my time and prevent boredom and going crazy with making a tutorial per request of some friends and coworkers on mechanical splicing fiber optic cables, um, or other known as making fiber, fiber optic connectors. Um, I'm definitely not affiliated with any of the companies that uh, manufacture the tools or the connectors. So this is strictly for entertainment purposes only. So hopefully you learn something and if anything you just are entertained by this video. So let's get started. Well first order of business is due to the fact that the glass can be very dangerous if it's anywhere near your face as you need safety glasses. So we're going to go ahead and put ours on. I have two types of fiber here that I'll um, explain how to prep and use. This is what's called the drop fiber, just a portion's been cut off. It would go from the OTE, the optical terminal enclosure, which is outside at the pole, like I said, into your house. So we'll set this aside for now. Then we have house fiber, which would um, go from the drop connection outside your house to inside your house to the equipment. Um, they're both prepared very similar, just different preparation steps to get to the point that we're making a connector. So <clears throat> we'll start with this house fiber and then I'll explain the drop fiber because it'll make more sense once we um, get a handle on using this. So we're gonna do a corning connector as you can see here, which just comes in a kit that I have. Um, and then a similar, uh, connector but uh, AFL fast connector this one requires less steps um, just in my opinion has more room for air so and is a bit more delicate so the first order uh, business is to get the cam tool out here which is going to hold our connector and uh, let us make a connection so we open the black lid as such grab a fitting remove these dust caps. I like to keep the top one at least. Uh, so once I'm done and I need to handle the connector, I can put it on so it doesn't get dirtied or damaged. So with the load button we press, which slides the load mechanism out of the way or the aligning holding mechanism out of the way, whatever you might call that. Slowly slide this down until the connector is being held in place. Its top portion slides down like such slides into place until it stops this is going to beam light through the connector to let us verify that we actually made a good splice or a good connector once that is slid down we turn it on the light is green we close this lid if this flash is orange then we know that the connector has a problem you'd want to throw that away and um, grab another connector and put it in the machine like we just did We'll set this aside for now. Throw this away. <clears throat> My little trash bag here. Which is important that you uh, clean up your debris so nobody can get hurt or um, hurt from the glass. So the first step is we need to remove this outer um, casing, which I have a tool for such a thing. If you don't, you can use the scissors or some other means. We need to remove enough of the casing to give us usable inner fiber to work with. So I like to do that twisting motion as you can see. This is Kevlar reinforcement um, just to strengthen or give the fiber strength when it's being handled um, so it doesn't obviously break. We use our scissors. I have these slightly nicer ones and they come in this kit. We cut all that off. Throw that away. <clears throat> this is the inner um, casing uh, and the fiber is clearly inside this. So we take our rubber boot, slide this on and out of the way. So the first measurement we need <clears throat> is putting the end of this fiber like we see here, or I'm doing here, on 50 and measure or mark at zero. We take our three hole cutter here and 
the first hole or the one at the end which is the largest you want to take and just clip snip depress not be depressed because you have covid just depress the tool uh collect all of these out of your way with your scissors cut this off discard that measurement two stuff is attacking us measurement two is 11 inches from <clears throat> this outer casing so you place that at 11 and then mark at zero similar to the first step or whatever step that is snip that twist and pull that off you grab one of these brass tubes like such or somehow and slide this over this working some means to get this out of your way like that the next measurement this time having the outer casing at zero you want to mark 13 basically like that I like to hold this inner casing so when I'm pulling this it's not uh, straining the fiber inside like that if you clip it and you're pulling, um, especially if you're outside and the it's cold or if it's cold and wherever you are. Um, take smaller bites like this and instead of all at once. Now this is the fiber. <clears throat> it's covered in cladding which lets the light as it's being transmitted through the glass reflect um, and provide the information to the other end. We need to remove that for preparation to put the connector on so sorry and for this inner coating to remove that um, it's the second notch just snip and then slide off for the cladding it's the last slot as we can see there's the last slot there you want to put this at the end of the coating holding this, sliding this off, which is essentially scraping the cladding off. Kind of clean this tool out. Set this aside. There's a cloth that you can use. You can hear it squeaking, uh, which means that it's clean. If it doesn't squeak, that's quite all right. We grab our clevis. it down in the notch until it seats at the end and release you can see the glass or maybe you can't see the glass coming out the other end if you press this red button once it's been inserted and being held by this portion of the tool of the clevis if there's a bow or a kink in the glass pressing this will release that um, so the glass is in there straight and then it will be cut correctly but once you're in there and it's being held, as you can see, if I tug on this, it doesn't move. Press this button, which is now cut or guillotine the glass. Push the black button. There's the portion at the right length of fiber that we need. Pushing the red button releases the unnecessary trash, which we're going to throw away in a safe location. We put the clevis away. <clears throat> Pick up the cam tool and line the glass up to the fitting on the bottom and insert it like this. Making sure that it doesn't get snagged or bowed or kinked on the way in or obviously broken. We can see the red light coming out. To press the button, green means go, red means you did something wrong and cut the connector off and start over. But at this moment, we're good. So we twist this green button as such, which is crimping the <clears throat> connector onto the fiber. We can open our lid, 
holding the cam portion, which is operated by this black button, we want to slide the top portion, which was beaming the light down. We can turn this off. Holding the fiber, release the connector. Pressing that red button, as you can see, resets the cam button for uh, the next time we need to use this. So we're done with that. We can slide that out of the way. Next, we slide this brass ring or brass tube down. And then with the Kevlar fibers inside, slide it to the connector. We need to get our crimping tool. Which you just squeeze and it releases. Set this in the tool. Squeezing until it clicks and releases. Set that out of the way. <clears throat> we take our boot and there's lettering on the boot. We want to have that on the top of the connector. And the top of the connector has the writing on the connector itself. Kind of squeeze that in there until it clicks. You might feel a click. It doesn't really make that much of a noise. Um, on the connector, removing the holding portion of the connector, getting the last outer section of this connector. The slot is on top and facing the outside of the cable that we're constructing. It's a little bit wider, the portion that goes to the left here or to the inside of the cable and the outside is a bit narrower. But we need this squared up with the boot. Like that. There should be a bit of movement in here. This is when I like to take the dust cover and put it back on the connector. Hi, right, welcome back. Um, we're going to do a AFL fast connector, which what we need out of the bag for our application is just the connector. The rest of that can be discarded. Remove the connector from the bag. Uh, this is blue because this would go on the uh, fiber modem versus the green would go onto a bulkhead <clears throat> on the side of a structure. So set this aside. Similar to the corning connector, it has a, a boot that will help hold the connector in place. We very much need to remove the outer casing like before, which again, you can find one of those, use scissors, just be delicate that you're not cutting the inside um, fiber. So we're gonna take that off, remove all this madness. Hold that out of the way. Cut that off. <clears throat> this is the portion of the inner casing that we're going to work with. So similar to the corning, but very much different measurements. I like to put this at 60 and then measure zero. Take our cutter here the first notch crimp that pull this off getting this out of the way we take our boot slide this over the inner fiber and finessing all of this kevlar reinforcement out of the way sliding that down like this then we put the end of the inner casing at zero and measure or mark, sorry, at 20. Measuring and marking at 20. I like to still <clears throat> hold this inner portion, prevent it from getting stressed. We take the second notch Cut and slide off like such. 
We take the third notch, scrape off this cladding, discard that, close this up, discard this, get some cleaning solution. You can hear it squeaking, squeaky clean. So I like to put this in my right hand while holding this connector. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. We very much need to cleave the glass <clears throat> to the right length. Pressing the two buttons, take the connector in the notch. If it has some resistance, slide it back and try again. With the outer casing um, at zero, which I've marked with a sharpie to make my life easier, we release this, which is being held by the clevis or the cleaver, sorry. Pressing the button, cuts it to the right length that we need. Pressing the red button, we can release the unnecessary portion of glass. Now we take the connector and we're going to insert it into the AFL connector. So we feel it seat inside the connector like this we can see here pushing these releases the holder from the connector we want to slide down releasing the Kevlar fibers screwing the boot on like such holding these out of the way just cut the excess so it doesn't get in our way. And we have a successful AFL connector ready for use. So I grab my light tester here. Go ahead and turn this on. Remove this dust cover. Slide this onto the fitting like such. Check the other end. We have a very nice bright light, um, which would indicate that we made a successful AFL connector and corny connector. Um, if it's not as bright, your connector still may work, but the service may be intermittent or the cable uh, production or usage may be intermittent as well. And <clears throat> just because the light's coming through doesn't mean that the connectors are properly terminated. So you could give it a try. Uh, if not, if you're unsatisfied then yours isn't bright as mine very much cut the connector off and attempt again hopefully you learned something hopefully this entertained you for however long this took 10 minutes uh, feel free to comment in the bottom of my video like always